Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Jada Bailey, the Mindful Mage. And it's great to see you again. Welcome back. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be discussing something that I have been hesitant to post for at least the last six months or so, which is my deity reveal. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the deity and or deities that I have been working with over the last few months to a year. Um, and I haven't been that gung-ho to post about it because one, it just felt too soon and two, that was a lot I needed to figure out still. It definitely did not come easily to me. Um, I felt called, I felt pulled to work with these two deities and for a good while I could not really distinguish which of the two of them were reaching out to me but it was quite, it was, it was really clear that one of them at least was reaching out. So I'm feeling ready to talk about it, feeling ready to reveal my deities and uh without further ado let's get into it so i recently decided to update slash refresh um my altars there's a new moon coming up and i really like to do new moon rituals around a fresh altar um and i figured it would be a great time to one do an altar tour slash set up tutorial video and two, talk about the deities that I've chosen to make these altars for. Now I have decided to do a two part video cause there are two deities and there's just so much to be said about both of them. So in today's video, we are going to do my altar tutorial slash tour and reveal of the deity I have been working with, which is It's Lilith. I made this myself. <laughs> it's on a little sheet of notebook paper. But yeah, the deity that I've been working with for close to the last year has been Lilith. So, does that scare you at all? Because it scared the crap out of me when I first like felt that energy when I first felt pulled cold tour and started like deep diving into all that is Lilith it scared the crap out of me I'm not gonna lie because as you all know if you've seen any of my videos and you're not new here I grew up in a very 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 Christian household and undoing a lot of that religious dogma and trauma and fear mongering has been quite difficult because it is deeply rooted so there are still uh figures or yeah figures i do feel wary about working with because of my religious background um and i've just come to a place where i'm like okay i'm just if i'm curious if i feel any type of pull toward it i will look into it i will do my research as i always encourage all of you guys to do and and see what happens see what i can find because knowledge is power or you know sin we're not quite clear yet but so goddess lilith the dark mother or one of the dark mothers she's gotten such a bad rep over the last few centuries and i mean to no one's surprise you know because patriarchy and patriarchy going to do with patriarchy the patriarchy going to do and if there's one thing they do best it is the complete and utter destruction and demonization of women yay which you can clearly see all throughout history from the origin tale of Adam and Eve to the complete, again, destruction, um, dismantling and fear mongering around herbalists, midwives, healers, that sort of thing that quickly became uh, witches in league with the devil and whores and this, that and the third and led to countless deaths of innocent lives for no reason other than to spread fear and hate. However, 
With the uprise in notoriety for the Divine Feminine, Lilith has actually had one of, if not the biggest transformations over the last few decades of any deity I currently know of. The information and associations that you'll find on this goddess will largely depend on the time period you're looking into. So fair warning, for centuries she was associated with the darkest, most vile, evil deeds known to humanity. And for a very long time, this narrative was the most prominent one pushed surrounding Lilith's story. But like I said, a lot of demonizing and a lot of fear mongering. Uh, let me know, please let me know if you want me to do like an in-depth video on the history of Lilith, the bad, the good, the ugly and everything in between and how she came to be uh, worshipped as the feminist empowerment deity she is today, embracing your, you know, desires darker otherwise, embracing and loving yourself sort of thing. So let me know if you want to do a deep dive video on Lilith, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, but for today, I just wanted to talk about her a little bit and then show you the altar that I've set up um, in her honor. So. As I mentioned, Lilith is a symbol of freedom, independence, and the divine dark feminine. If you want to work with her, these would be a few good reasons to do so. Uh, for guidance, courage, confidence, strength, getting in tune with your emotions, finding your voice, finding your inner power, and chasing your desires with confidence. Her associations are wings, wind, owls, flames, roses, and snakes, just to name a few. And um, if you wanted to set up an altar for her, a few things that you could offer the goddess would be roses, wine, crystals, praise, and art. And some of the practices surrounding Lilith include candle magic and sex magic and blood blood magic. Uh, please be careful with those last two, especially blood magic. Um, and of course, those are not a requirement. You do not have to participate in sex magic or blood magic in order to work with Lilith. Um, she's also linked to meditation, divination, and tarot. A few of the more savory uh, practices. <laughs> Some two of the overlapping deities that are often associated or confused with Lilith is Hecate and Kali. Um, Hecate is actually the second deity I am working with and will be making my next video about. And she, it's like I said, it's been a struggle to figure out in the earlier half of the year which of the two deities Lilith or Hecate was reaching out was or I was feeling the most pulled to um, and in the end I just ended up working with them both for good reason they do have quite a few similarities and similar energies uh, but at the same time they are two entirely different entities um, and have their very unique energies and practices and associations as well. So how do you know if Lilith is calling to you or you are being called to her? Uh, the first and most, most obvious is if you just feel called, pulled to her energy. If you think about her often or have been thinking about her often frequently, if you have been seeing signs of her, um, even on social media, but let's keep in mind with social media, there is a whole algorithm. So if you go searching for her or you interact with a video about her, chances are you'll start to see more videos about her on your feed. So take that one with a grain of salt. Um, it could look like something as simple as a warming sensation in your sacral chakra. She could also come to you in your dreams where you might have visions of snakes, owls, dragons, or some type of dark, mysterious, feminine figure. 
Um, and you can also see those things in person, snakes and owls, hopefully not dragons, although that would be pretty cool. But these are all signs that she may be calling out to work with you and keep your eyes peeled and pay attention to it. Also, I'm going to recommend, as I always do, if you are interested in working with her at all, please, please do your own research. Deep, deep, deep dive into everything about the goddess, what it's like to work with her, and whether or not you think you'd be compatible. I thought this altar cloth would be great for Lilith's altar, so I started with that and a black ca black candle placed right in the center with a bit of rosemary for strength, love, cleansing, and protection as well. And then I'm going to add to the rosemary some red dried rose petals. Red rose petals or roses in general are another association of Lilith and as is the color red. So to those, I'm gonna take three carnelian stones. Carnelian is a sacral chakra stone as well as a fire element stone uh, for motivation, protection, creativity, and personal power. And as I said, art is something you can add to your altar for Lilith. So I made her insignia just on a sheet of notebook paper and I'm gonna place that at the top of my altar. Yes, I did realize shortly afterwards that I placed it upside down, but don't worry, I'll, I'll fix it later. I also have this necklace with her insignia that I'm gonna just wrap around my candle. Jewelry is another great thing to offer to the goddess. So I thought it'd be pretty cute since it's jewelry and well, it has her insignia. You really can't go wrong there, can you? This um, marble bowl I'm going to be using to add offerings or for rituals. Not entirely sure yet, but I just added a bit more rosemary here, some pink salt for attraction and love, and a carnelian silver spoon. This is more so for decoration and again for the carnelian, a powerful association when it comes to Lilith. And I wrote a little prayer here on another sheet of paper that I just added to the offering bowl as well. Hopefully she reads it. So I've got a few stones here. Obsidian for grounding protection and to reveal what is hidden. I have Jasper for balance, security, sexual passion and strength. And Tourmaline to repel negative energy and more Carnelian as well. I added um, amethyst to act as a spirit. I tried to organize the stones in like a four and the same as a pentagram. Um, and that's where I have my amethyst. And I added some dried rose petals around as well, as long, along with this um, dried rose that I dried myself and a few yellow ones for respect and trust to the goddess, of course. I thought I was gonna be done here, but no. So I have this snake jewelry pendant. Um, it's an ear cuff, and like I said, jewelry makes a great offering for the goddess. So I added that, and I added the rosemary and pink salt that I had from before um, that I added to the bowl, and some moon water from the super moon back in August. I've added that to her altar as well. Um, and of course, must have some prosperity oil just to attract prosperity. Um, hopefully the goddess will listen because my main manifestation goal is not being broke. <laughs> and I found these three little skull candles that were pretty cute. So I added them to her altar as well because, you know, why not? They seem to fit the aesthetic. Um, so just added those about the place. And yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. Looks good. Yeah. I actually ended up switching out the altar cloth that I had chosen before for something a little more 
um, fitting for Lilith. I think I'll use that triple moon goddess altar cloth for my Hecate altar video. Uh, but here we are, the finished product, my Lilith altar. Um, I moved it to a little table as well that I can, you know, move around or about to different rooms if need be. But here she is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. Um, please, as always, let me know if you have any questions or comments or feedback in the comment section below. Uh, and I will be seeing you next week with my Hecate Alter video. Bye.